doesn't seem like the disembodied spirit of a once living person. So what do you think it is? I think it's something that's been invited in. This is paranormal state. And 
I was like, one day I hope I can work with you guys. Um, and, you know, so years later I go to college and whatever I experienced was so impactful that it stayed with me. Like, what makes some of us, despite the taboos of paranormal investigation, keep doing it? Going out and seeking answers. A lot of us have been touched by something. It's altered our lives to where, like, we need answers. And so I started Paranormal Research Society at Penn State. We are. We got a few. Um, we just lost to Ohio, but yeah, oh well. But started this club, and I was really just looking for people to like can maybe teach me. And there was nobody. Like trust me, I had no desire to be like this paranormal. Whatever I was looking for. Maybe there were, but we just weren't as connected as we are now. There weren't paranormal conferences. And if there were, it might be like five, ten people showing up. So now you've got six, seven thousand people coming to this one, which is amazing. But, you know, started PRS, and at first I was trying to find my own answers. I was very selfish. Um, it's like that movie Twister, where Helen Hunt, she's always trying to see the inside of the tornado because she had an experience. But as I started doing residential cases, I started realizing I could make this about me or I could put my own drive, desire aside for a moment and help them. Because they were frightened right now. My experiences were 10, 15 years prior. So my mission kind of altered and changed and got some notoriety. This is before parallel shows were we got offered to do a couple shows, one was for MTV, which that would have been a totally different show. These are college kids, you got ghosts, this would be fun. Um, and I turned them all down, but then a &E was like, we just want to follow you. And I was like, you know, this might be a great way to make money to, because they'll pay for us to go investigate all over the country. I mean, trust me when I say, like, we thought we were rich when we put all our money together and got EMF detector. We were like, wow. <laughs> so, I mean, we were broke-ass college kids, so we were like, this is a great opportunity, okay. We never thought we'd go past season one. Um, I had been in touch with Lorraine, and I had asked for her to come speak at Penn State, but she was caring for Ed. Um, and I, I would just talk to her very quickly. If any, for those of you who met her, probably know you could just randomly call her house and she would talk to you if she had free time. I admire that about her. I wish I had that ability. I mean, she could just go on and on and on and talk to you and talk to you and, and, and just, she was such a great listener. And even though she was caring for her husband who was passing, like, you know, she was like, well, if I can make it, I will, but it never happened. And then Ed passed away. And we all knew about it. You know, he was a pioneer. You know, a definitive figure of the 20th century for parallel investigation. Like, there's so much about this field we can credit to him and Lorraine. So I reached out and said, I know that Ed just passed. If you need to, if you can't come to our conference, this is fine. She goes, I don't know why, I just, I'm going to do it. And she did, and we just hit it off so powerfully. And the way we investigated worked. And I was always looking for a mentor. And I found one in her, and I was very blessed that in her, she was kind of in retirement because she was taking care of Ed, but she decided to come out of retirement after Ed passed, and she was like, I want to get back out there and carry on the message. And so here she was in her 80s, hiking through the woods with me, <laughs> traveling all over the frickin' country, in her 80s. I'm, I just turned 40, I'm tired. <laughs> like, y'all weren't joking when you talked about hitting 40, God. But, yeah, like, I just, I admire that about her. And I learned a lot. And it always kind of angered me, the criticisms people would say about Ed Lorraine. But I never knew Ed, but, again, Lorraine was one of those people who, like, if she had the ability to help you, she would do it. Like, she would take your phone call, 
She would, and this is besides parable estate, she was still doing residential cases with Tony, with Nesper, on their own, again, in her 80s, because she wanted to continue the work. She never charged. So what that they wrote books and they charged for speaking events, that's how they made a living. And they got to help people. Um, I learned a lot from her. And, you know, it was an honor and a privilege to see her in action. And I got to see her channel twice. And, you know, when you watch the Conjuring movies and you see Vera Farmiga, Farmiga, yep, close enough, okay. And she does the channeling thing. Like, I remember we were in Connecticut doing a case for season two. And, you know, and I was warned, you know, like she doesn't do this as much because, you know, she was older, but all of a sudden she sat down in this house. She went straight to the boys' room, which is where the activity was primarily happening. Eyes closed and she just started having a conversation. And at first I didn't know what was going on. I thought maybe she was talking to me. No, she was talking to the boy who had passed in the house and we verified she didn't know this. And the boy, she was like, is this boy autistic? And I was like, yeah. And then she said, okay. And then she just kept talking. As she was talking, like you just felt something. And then the door just suddenly like opened, closed, open. And then she, Lorraine, he was not even missing a beat. She was like, stop that, honey. Don't do that, you'll scare him, honey. <laughs> Which I was, I was a little freaked out because like, when, and then I, my, my experience with Annabelle, like, what was it, like 10 years ago, the first time I ever met Annabelle, we did a haunt, like one of those haunted horror houses, fun houses in Pennsylvania, and they brought some of the artifacts, and they were, before we were about to meet people. So people would go through this little maze and see the artifacts at the end. They would take pictures of me and Lorraine. And then there was Annabelle. I remember being like, oh my God, I finally get to meet her. So I remember I looked down at her and I'm like, so you're the thing everyone's making this fuss about. And her head just went <laughs> Then right back up slowly. And I was like, <laughs> and I don't know what happened, but nobody was there. Like Lorraine was gone. Tony wasn't there. One of my other teammates wasn't there. I guess they just kept going as I was looking at her, and I thought I was being pumped. So, and then as I'm sitting there staring at this thing, and I swear it was only a couple seconds, but then I suddenly guests and fans, attendees start coming and taking pictures. And I wish I could find some of those attendees because those first several photographs, you know, we had a professional photographer, and I'm just constantly like this because I didn't want my back to Annabelle. And I remember just like freaking out, and Lorraine's like, she would hit me, and she's like, stop looking at it, honey. I'm like, but Lorraine, it's head. And she goes, it doesn't matter. She's getting a rise out of you. She's just so nonchalantly that this doll just nodded. She's like, I know. Um, but she just had this gift. And I personally forever believe Lorraine is the real deal. Not necessarily just because I work with her, but because of her character. She helped people. She helped people, she helped people all the way until her death. And, you know, I know we're all here, you know, there's all kinds of amazing people here. And you guys have come from all over the country, but we're here to honor and celebrate Ed and Lorraine and, you know, hopefully carry out their message of strength and hope. You know, they were a light when a lot of times in certain places there was nothing but darkness. And it's just so cool to see so many people here come to celebrate them. So thank you guys for coming. So, and I figure we would do a Q&A because I guess we're behind on time from some other speakers. And it was only 45 minutes to begin with, so Donnie's here somewhere. I'm right here. There he is. Popping up where you least expect me. Does anyone have any questions that they would like to ask? Okay, a few. It would be really awkward if everyone like to know. Hello. I yes. Um, it's been a process. Paranormal State was extremely exhausting. I'm sure many of you guys know I suffered through addiction, pretty hardcore, and depression. And the combination of that was pretty bad. I went through 
in my own kind of dark night of the soul, if you will. Came out of addiction. Um, although you never really beat addiction. Um, but rebuilt myself up, and I realized just how much of a toll paranormal investigating took on me. I mean, literally, this was my job for seven years. Every week, I was traveling the country and doing a case. And if I was home, I was working on cases. Like, we were having thousands of cases a month come in. So, it, the burnout was real. I hadn't fully come to know myself. So, I kind of went through my own kind of journey of self discovery, which, of course, we are always figuring ourselves out. Nobody knows that, I don't think, you know, immediately. But, um, and then I decided I wanted to pursue a couple of things. One is, I'm, in grad, I'm sure some of you heard me already talk about this. I'm in grad school for counseling. If you're at the VIP party, I was pitching about it. Like, grad school and effing sucks, but <laughs> it really does. But it's actually really rewarding. So I want to merge counseling with the paranormal, um, and we're working with other counselors. You know, we're slowly building a network of people around the country who are open to this and who are very well established. And when I say merging counseling and the paranormal, I don't mean like going, mm -hmm, "You're crazy." I mean like using counseling as a way to heal from your, you know, as one of the ways you can heal from this experience that you've had. Because a lot of people, not all, but a lot of people, the experiences are traumatic. And they need to process it. And sometimes when they're in immediate haunting, they kind of need a, a stronger family unit to solidify and fight whatever's there. And hopefully that makes sense. But, so to answer your question, every year I hear from different networks or we have talks with networks, and right now I have to finish grad school. It's not one of those things where I can do both. Um, but we regularly have talks. Um, people, I mean, the fact that Paranormal State is still a, like a popular stream show 15 years later, like they all know this. So, you know, yeah, there's definitely interest. So we're having conversations. Uh, one of the producers for Paranormal State is a good friend of mine. And, he has some other shows out there, and we keep trying to develop something, so, yeah. That was a super long answer, I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah. Or, are you making liars out of me? I saw a hand, I know I did. All right, we'll go over here to that ginormous hand right there. We got hands. All right, good, we got hands. We got hands, everybody. Yeah, I'm just gonna pass this around. Yeah, I, I like the public stuff. I just, places that are very heavily, I call them heavily excavated, like places that have been, you know, had investigators go in all year round, every year for several years. I almost feel like we need to give them a break. Um, so like, I try to find places that are, haven't really hit yet. And that's been kind of exciting. I love urban legends. I love everything creepy. I've been uh, hyping up uh, Wilson Castle in Proctor, Vermont. We had a really awesome experience there. Two nights in a row, like amazing. Um, and like that one hasn't really popped yet per se. Um, but yeah, I, I, I've done Jersey Devil, we've done Mothman, um, all things spooky. How much time you got? <laughs> I, have yeah. a lot. So... I like to say this to people who.
who do investigations. And I've been, not claiming I've been around longer than anyone else, but I've been around for a while. I've seen a lot of people burn out, it's not just me. And my burnout is very public, but um, there is, a burnout is real for anything in counseling, law enforcement, military, paranormal investigation. You're dealing with some really intense stuff. Um, I think sometimes we like to look at it as just ooh, spooky ghost, but what does that mean, a ghost? Okay, it means that there's something, there's a reason why they're still here. There's a reason why they attached onto this family. Evidence is awesome, we need that. You know, it's almost like they're, I, I hate how we bicker as paranormal investigators because it's almost like having different specialists within the medical field. Someone who's just more interested in tech, awesome. Someone who's more interested in the psychic stuff, cool. But with the people, there's a human element and that goes not just for the clients, for those who work with clients, but it also goes for you too. If you're gonna go in and do this stuff, you do it for a long period of time and it starts to consume you. Um, you know, you're gonna start experiencing burnout. For me, like, I never wanted myself to be defined as a guy from TV, but I just want to kind of help people and then maybe change the conversation. And I can safely say when Parallel State did that back when there were no other shows out there. Um, now I want to try the counseling perspective, but the parable. And the person who asked the question, she, I can't see her, but she's here somewhere. Oh, there you are. Um, I feel exhausted sometimes still. I feel tired. But I've been to a couple different psychics who don't know who I am. And is it worth it all? Not is it worth it all? It can be, yeah, it can be. If, but what defines be, making it worth it? Like, that's up to you. Oh, great, now you gave me something really deep to think about tonight. Thank you. <laughs> we have a question over here. So, out of all the stories that we've seen on different networks and different uh, investigations, are there stories that are just too horrific to even yes. Is too horrific. Just too terrifying that like you, you can't even put this on network TV. This is just too we shouldn't tell people this exists. I think if people truly understood the realm of the demonic, mm -hmm. also known as inhuman phenomena, I, I think demons kind of comes with a lot of baggage, but I use that term because people think, oh, demons must mean Christian theology, must mean this, that. It doesn't matter. There's just these dark forces, these forces. In this world, but not of our world, as Malachi Modern Martin said. Um, I think that, like, as some of the cases from Paranormal State, we didn't include some of the most intense stuff that happened. That was really dark, really crazy, and I was shocked that they didn't put it on there. Um, but it was for a lot of reasons. Protection for the clients, we want to embarrass them. I think the reality of the paranormal is way scarier than TV. Um, but I think if you look at all the paranormal documentary stuff out there, there's truth in all of it. But yeah, I think the inhuman stuff is probably an area where the further, the closer you get to just how real that stuff is, it's kind of disturbing. So, all right, we have about time for like three more times. Her, there's somebody in the middle that had their hand up and we go down that end there. So here we go, ready? Hi Ryan. Hi. My question is, as far as physical attacks, what is your worst physical attack that you've had with spirits or demons or whatever? Well, I would say that when I was dealing with addiction, some things, but that's by no means me saying the devil made me do it or anything like that. Like, I take ownership for my own actions, but there were a lot of weird things that happened. Um, outside of that, because that's something I'm still processing, but doing cases, consulting with the Catholic Church, um, 
Yeah, there were moments where I was scratched a lot down the back in my own home. Um, that was in 2005. That I've never experienced anything like that, that deliberate, that strong since. Um, but I mean, that was, and in fact, I think they, I think they're making a movie about the case. Um, this is way before Paranormal State, but it's, they wrote a book. It's called The Devil on the Brownsville Road, or something like that. It took place in Pittsburgh. It was really intense. And every time we were about to head out there, many of us would get attacked. It was so bizarre. Um, that was my first true deep foray into the dawn. I don't know if someone over here. Hi. Hi. Sorry, I was a little loud. <laughs> I think that they're always there, um, but it's up to us to make those choices. Um, you know, I have people ask me like, oh, do you think that's why you fell into drugs? This and that. I don't deny that there probably is a connection, but I, at the end of the day, I'm still the one who did it. I'm still the one who took those actions, um, did those things, you know, but that's why I've been very careful coming back into this world. And part of me is also just kind of, I'll do cases, obviously, but I'm also okay with just teaching, too. You know, passing on information to people. Um, I think, maybe, sometimes I fantasize that maybe there should be a time limit on this, but then again, Ed and Lorraine did it. But if you notice, Ed and Lorraine were very family-oriented. Um, but I, I think they were just touched by some, by the divine. Surprised how many people get hysterical and when they get 
hysterical, or they freak out, and they can cause even more pain. So you want to try to have someone who can kind of be like a ground, like if you're freaking out, they're calm. If they're freaking out, you're calm. Um, I would definitely not recommend going solo to do a full investigation of this yet. But some people don't recommend solo, period. I, I, I can't, as much as I understand the safety of that, I like to go solo sometimes. Like I spent the night in places by myself, like just earlier this year, this haunted cabin in the woods. I was like, I'll stay the night by myself. But, well, I did have a dog, but. <laughs> And apparently there were like rats and squirrels crawling around, the dog didn't do anything, my dog just <laughs> snored, so, <laughs> yeah, all right, that's a good question, back here, okay, back here, there we go. Hi Ryan, do you think some of the TV networks should take some responsibility when they do some of the docu cases where, as in other television shows, they pay per view, and some of these That's a it's a good question because right now the paranormal field doesn't isn't really regulated. We're probably one or two accidents away from maybe there being some accountability on the networks as end. But I, I think right now the networks go ooh spooky fun. I know that AD was very respectful of what we did. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, they're like, hey, we ordered 20 episodes, we need 20 episodes. Whoosh, go do it. Um, so I can't speak to the other shows, but I think that, sure, if something bad happens, it might come down to that. So that's a good question. Yeah. Anybody else from here? Hi, Ryan. Hello. Um, quite a few years ago, I did an investigation with you um, at the Reynolds Mansion in Delta. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Do you still keep in touch with everyone uh, now that they're in school and things and shelling? Do you get in touch with Chip Coffee? I know you just surf, right? No, like, I, I, people ask me that a lot. I'm sure people probably ask them too. <laughs> Um, over time, we just started losing touch. I know that, again, there was, Paranormal State was an extremely tough show. It was stressful, it was stressful on me, I'm sure it was stressful on them. And we all just kind of went and started doing our own things. Um, you know, I haven't, you know, I haven't heard from someone since my addiction. Um, at the same time, too, I've also been like, okay, to kind of just move forward. Um, I hear from some of them every so often. Happy birthday text for just, I don't know, we like each other's thing or our stuff, Facebook or whatever. But it's just, it's something hard to explain, but you know, it's like I'm rooting for them. I'm so happy they're all doing well. Um, but we're all kind of on our own paths. And we're all still relatively young. You never know. We might all come back around again. So. So you're saying I'm fading out? <laughs> no, it's okay. No, thank you. Uh, I think, I think sure. I, I think that anyone who especially works with helping people like counseling, you have to have empathy. I've never liked to say sensitive. Um, maybe, but sure. At the same time, I, I definitely agree that I have some intuition. I just process it differently. Um, I still have a journey to go through. Um, it's funny how many people who are sensitive in the paranormal have also struggled with addiction. Like, it's crazy. And you know, people who are in recovery, they don't have to say they're in recovery. I've had a lot of people privately tell me, you know, they, you know, have supported me and have sent me messages and have said they're in recovery. Some of them are well known. And, you know, and it's just we've privately talked, but that's for, their, that's for them to share. 
but it's just, I think there's something to it. I just don't know what my sensitivity is. You know, so. Okay, here we go. Hi, Ryan. Hello. About maybe 10 minutes ago, you were answering a question and then something shifted a little. And it was when you were saying that when you go to a meeting and they don't know who you are, you're about to say something to them. What were you, you going to say about George Zimmer and the picture you made on site? Do you remember? Oh, yeah. Um, like, I struggle sometimes sharing super personal feelings that make me personal things that are, I feel in here, but I had people, like I was in Salem, I just walked in to talk with a psychic, and the first thing the woman did is her cards jumped, and she's like, oh, there's addiction here, I don't know why I do that, I'm so sorry, and I'm like, no, that kind of makes sense. Um, and then she goes, as she was talking to me, she's like, there's this woman, she's older, she's so sweet, and she says, you know, I'm, she's trying to talk to you, but she's patient, she's, she's just so excited. Had that happen a couple times from people, um, you know, who it's hard to explain. It's like I'm not talking about events here, but like random chance stuff. Or I honestly don't believe they knew who I was. The show was many years ago, and I'm older looking now, and you know, like. Women said that. But yeah, no, they bring up Lorraine, uh, without saying Lorraine, they just talk about a woman and an uh, older lady, and, and they describe how she, Lorraine acts to a T, and I, it just it sticks with me, and I think, you know, I don't know where I was going with that per se, but I think Lorraine is encouraging from the other side. So this one is going to be the last question right here, okay? So, mm -hmm. so make it a good one, no pressure. <laughs> So if you want someone, <laughs> a part of that idea, I'm all for it. Yeah, we yeah. need social workers, counselors, yes. psychologists. Yes. And it's I time. And I have a um, uh, concentration in uh, SUD as well, so yeah. Okay, I mean, substance abuse. Yeah. It's time for the mental health community to kind of play their role in, in acknowledging that there is something out there, that something's happening with people, and instead of writing it off as a mental illness, you're, you're experiencing something in your home, they should just be like, well, you know, they're just crazy. Like, it's, we're long past that. Something is happening out there, and, you know, people need help. So, that's awesome. So, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Reach out to me somehow. Like, we're slowly getting people's information. So, thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoy the rest thank of the you. conference. Thank you. God bless you all. Happy Halloween.